Prophecy. Um, now, there's a lot to say about prophecy. We could be here till tonight, okay? But I want to try in 30 minutes to bring you the basic. The basic is, there's a lot about prophecy. I just said that, right? I did. So I don't want to say things twice. I want you to, when I was young, I was in my teen, I missed algebra class. I was sick for a couple of days, and I missed the basic. And all my life after that, which was another couple of years, I had problem with algebra. Something was missing, it was the basic. So about the gifts, I want to make sure you get this, because we'll be talking about prophecy, but first, okay? I want you to understand something. We serve a good God. Amen? Amen? And the Bible tells us in James 1.17, I think uh, we have that verse, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the pa Father above. How many agree with me? God is in the business of giving us good gifts. You have to understand that. And, you know, Satan will step in the middle of this sometime, but God is good. He wants to give us good gifts. And it says that there's no variation or shadow of turning. I mean, this is God. And I want to tell you about the gift that he gives us. And I'm going to try to go quick so I can go through everything. God has created you. Amen? And he has put gift in you. And I'm going to talk a little bit about natural gift. Some of you are smart. That's a gift. And uh, some of you are good with kids. That's a gift. Some of you are, have a servant heart. You know, you, you, you're just happy when you serve. Other people, you know, you like to, to exhort people. Uh, some of you are good with uh, sick people. You know, you, you're just kind of caring and all that stuff. We all have gifts. And if I were to give you the mic and you would say, well, I really enjoy doing this because I'm really good at it. That's a gift from God. You come over here and you're saved, or you come over here and you're not saved, it doesn't matter. You're gifted. God has gifted every one of his creation. You have to understand that. And you know, the person that's sitting next to you, look at them. They have a gift. And it's probably it's not the same gift that you have. It's a natural gift. You understand that? We have all natural gifts. But that's not it. That's not everything he did. He gave us two more gifts. God loves to give gifts. And what he, he did, he gave us the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. That, that's an awesome gift. John 3, 16, you know that verse by heart. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe in him will not perish. I mean, this is another gift. Besides your natural gift that you have if you want to. He put his son there on a pole for you. He gave him to you. That's why it's so important to say, yes, Lord. Not run from God, but run to God. So that's one other gift. That is a supernatural gift. Now, the other supernatural gift is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He's the third person. And you know, I like this message because it, it shows the Father, it shows the Son, and it shows the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 14, I will pray the Father and he will send you the Holy Spirit. Jesus prayed a prayer, but the Father sent the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit, not Jesus. So the Holy Spirit comes and uh, he pours his gift, gifts upon you, upon you, upon us. And you know what? If you desire those gifts, they're there. You know, the Bible says to not to despise the gift, 
but to want the gift. To say, Lord, I need the gift. See, this church was started on the gift of the Holy Spirit. The things that happened in the past in this church, how God revealed himself and how God has showed us and the prophecy and the word and the healing and the restoration, it's all because of that one gift that God gave us, the Holy Spirit. And he's poured all this gift. Now you have to remember there's counterfeit, okay? And some people are so afraid of counterfeit that they won't even go there, which is stupid. Because if you got a bunch of money and there's counterfeit money going through, you say, well, I don't want any money because it could be counterfeit. Yeah. Right? So it could be good. So I don't want any. So it puts you in a place where you, you, you're not receiving anything. So, okay, so let's go. Uh, we, how are we doing? Okay, I've got my notes here, so I just got to stick by it so you understand. All right? Say that with me. Pastor, stick by your note, but not totally. All right. All right. So, okay. So, let's talk about the gift, gifts of, um, that Jesus gave us. Those are ministry gifts. Okay. And I just want to emphasize that. Ephesians 4, 8, okay, says that when he ascended on high... He, ascend, he descended on low. When, that's my version. When he came up from low, he brought gifts unto man. Now, these are ministry gifts, okay? Now, this is not the Holy Spirit gift. This is ministry gift. Ministry gift. And uh, the first one is apostle. The second one is prophet. The third one is evangelist, pastor, and teacher. We call them the five ministry gifts. Some of you know that. That's basic. But some of you don't know that. And I want to cover this so that you understand that the basic, you build on it. That's your foundation. Now, it has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Only has to do with Jesus. Because Jesus gives the body those gifts. And you know, you can have a room like this full of people, and there could only be maybe three, four, five ministry gifts in the whole. Because God will choose people, not because they're better and better looking. He chooses them because he wants to cho choose them. Ministry gift. Jesus came down the mountain, and he picked his 12 disciples one by one. The Holy Spirit doesn't pick the Jesus, because that's his function. That's his gifting. So he gives us the ministry gift. And, you know, uh, pastor, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Now, do you understand that? Now, those gifts are not for grab. Meaning you can't say, well, I want to be a teacher. Well, you either call by God to be a teacher, or you can teach. You can be called by God to be a pastor, or you can be a pastor. It is a fine line. I mean, these gifts, God, not God, sorry, Jesus brings, and he picks the people. And I remember when he picked me, I was uh, just getting God saved, and I was sitting down to read my Bible. And I heard a voice, go teach my people. Well... You know what? I argue with God a lot. I said, listen, I can hardly speak French anymore. My English is not too good. And I gave him a thousand reasons. I named all kinds of people that would be way better than I am. But he didn't give up. He didn't give up. So, so I said, after a while, the call does not go away. You can do a thousand things. You can pass a five, six years. The call of the ministry, if Jesus has called you in a ministry, this fivefold ministry, you better go for it because you won't let go. All right? So, um, 
So we see last week we had a prophet here. Two weeks ago, Charlie. The guy was good. I mean, he can read your mail just like that. He doesn't know you. And I mean, he just goes on and on and on. I can't do that. That's not my gifting. See, my gifting is was to teach the word. So I began to teach the word. Then God called us to pastor. And you know what? That's a calling, right? And you know why he called me to pastor and my wife? Because I got a gifting, you know, a natural gifting. Things sometimes don't bother me. You know, I, people can say things to me, and uh, it's like my gifting is I don't care. How would you like to have a gifting like that? You don't care. You know, people said things to me, people done things to me, they told me I was a lousy preacher, I'm not going any place, you should go back and do something else, and all that stuff. And I said, I don't care. That's my gifting, you know. Now I care about the flocks, but I don't care what you say about me, because you're not the one that has called me, it's Jesus. You know, and when he calls you, he makes a way, you better follow him. So I argued with him quite a bit, and uh, I had prophecy, two prophecy from people I've never seen before, one in Toronto, within about two months or something, exactly the same thing, what I, I felt God was calling. So I argued with God, I said, God, don't you care? I don't want to do this. You're just like me. You don't care. <laughs> but you don't argue with God. Because he didn't really care if I, if I went right away. Well, he wanted me to go and do something, but he, he just don't let go. So that's how you know if you have ministry gift. And you know, it's better, I would say, it's better if you don't. Because right now, you know, next, next month I'll be 6 to 9 years old, right? Now, I'm, I'm getting close to the good number, right? And, uh, and now God wants us to step into the apostleship to go and start another church. And I said to myself, no, I don't want to start another church. Everybody's retiring at 65. I want to be like Dan over there. I want to put my feet in the oven and sit down and enjoy life. <laughs> but the ministry gift is there and it's calling you and say, come on, get up and go. There is no retirement. There's just ministry. And you know, you just, so if you're not called for ministry, enjoy life. <laughs> enjoy your natural gift, and uh, you'll be doing good. So, so those are the gifts, okay? They're for men, they're for women. God, God calls you, I mean, Jesus calls you. Who called Paul on the road to Damascus? Was it the Holy Spirit? Jesus appeared to him and says, Who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. The one you persecuted. He said, go, I'm calling you, and I want to show you what you must suffer for my name's sake. Wow. Paul went to ministry that day. And Paul never let go. Paul worked in most of those offices. He, he was called to be an apostle, but he passed her, uh, he taught, uh, you know, he, he was used as a prophet also. So we see that Paul's ministry was called by God. And, and this is by Jesus. And I, can, I tend to send, I'm trying to correct myself and say the ministry gifts are for Jesus, from Jesus. Okay? Sometimes I forget. So um, Ephesians 4, 12. You have that? The ministry gift the people that God will pick someplace could be a, 
a man, could be a woman. I remember two weeks ago, there was a young lady over there sitting where, where Elmer and Judy is. That lady was there, and uh, just a young girl, and she had the call of a pastor on her life. She knew it too. I mean, the minute he, he looked at her, she started crying. God already speaks to those person. The prophet just come or a prophecy just come and just confirm what God has already said. So it's amazing to see God working with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. So, okay, uh, so it's for the perfecting of the saint. Okay, the ministry gift that Jesus gave, perfecting of the saint, the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body. You're the body. I'm the body. And those gifts that Jesus has, they're awesome. He picks people and he gives them anointing. And he, he, you know what I mean? He gives them the word and they come and they minister the gospel to you. And they minister life because... Jesus gives them life. Aren't you glad you're not in a dead church? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because if you go to church just to sit there and just hear some message that maybe might get a piece here and there, it's not enough. You've got to get enough that it makes you hungry, that it makes you thirsty, that you're not the, a little believer, that you, you, you know, you're strong, you're powerful, and you're mighty in God because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And let's come to the Holy Spirit. Page three. The gift of the Holy Spirit. I should open my Bible to the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because to talk another about prophecy, prophecy is in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now concerning spiritual gift, 1 Corinthians 12, gifts plural. Brethren, I do not want you to be unaware or to be ignorant. So God is saying, folks, don't be ignorant. I know it's not a good word, but that's what it says here. Don't be a fool, okay? You know that when you were pagan, you were led astray to the mute idol, however you were led. Now, let me tell you about my, my ancestor, my, my grandfather. My grandfather is a businessman. And where I come from, in the hill of Quebec City, south of Quebec City, there was somebody that saw the Virgin Mary appear someplace in the bush. Well, I don't know about you, but Catholic people believe in miracles. We believe in miracle before we were saved. So people came from the state. They came from everywhere. And, you know, they said, well, something has happened. You know, Virgin Mary up here or whatever. And they all came to pray and to get blessed or whatever. My grandfather, he's a businessman. So he, he brought a little boot there. And he was selling a hot dog or whatever he was selling. And he was making money out of that. He was making money. You see, the devil does his things, all right? And he took advantage of it. So he said, don't be a fool about the gifts, okay? Verse 4. Now he says this. There's variety of gifts, but the same spirit. He's saying there's many gifts. Okay, and he names nine. And there are a variety of ministry. Jesus does the ministry, right? But the same Lord. Jesus is Lord, right? There's a variety of effect, but the same God who works all things in all person. So you can't put God in the box. How many knows that? You know, like I remember one time I was praying for somebody in this chair. They couldn't walk, a lady. And pastor had called me. And you know, I, I pray for this lady. The anointing came on me. How many likes the anointing? 
It's like it's another person. It's not you, right? And that person rose up and she couldn't walk. And uh, her back was totally healed. Now the next person here uh, had the same problem. So I said, okay, well, God is doing this here. Well, God is going to do this over here. But he didn't. So <laughs> it didn't work. Because you cannot put God in a box. You cannot. And, and the gifts are the same. You may do something with the gift one time. The next time is something else. The effects of it is different all the time. And that's what I can't figure out yet. You cannot put God in a box. He'll do things different all the time. All the time. Okay, and he says, um, but to each one, each one of you, not each one of the minister that Jesus has chosen, but each one of the believer, each one, is giving the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So, God is saying here that the Holy Spirit that he gives you dwells in you. Now, he names nine gifts there. Nine gifts. And over the year, I probably, I will operate in most of them. I think I didn't do the different kind of tongue. But everything else over the years. And you know, it's not for me. The gifts are not for you. It's for somebody else. Somebody that God puts in your path. And you know what? You cannot minister in the natural. How many knows that? That sometimes you just can't minister. God, if you don't give me a word, I don't know what I'm going to do. If you don't give me a word, I don't have a word. If you don't, get, if you don't give me a gift that's needed for the moment. And you know, when, I, when we learn that, because there's, let's go over the gift. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirit. Now, I put them in classification because these are the knowing gift. Healing, miracle, and faith, these are the powerful gifts. You can operate in all of this because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. If you believe, you have to have faith, you know. Prophecy, differs kind of tongue and interpretation, those are the spoken gifts. So there you go, the Holy Spirit lives in you, and he's saying to you, these gifts abide in you. You understand that? You can use them. You have to believe in them. You've got to want them. You know, if I have, you could be here, down over here starving, or maybe you're so thirsty you could dry, die in a minute. And I, I got a bottle of water here, but unless you put it in that body, it's no good to you. The gift is the same. I mean, the gift is so awesome. God wants to give you gift, but you've got to desire them. But a lot of people are scared of the supernatural. How? Listen, when we got saved, that's a little while back, the supernatural was natural. I know it sounds a little bit like Sid Ross, but... Uh, it's not. The supernatural was natural. Every week you didn't know what was happening. Every week because somebody would get saved. That's a miracle. Somebody would get healed totally. Somebody would get delivered. And every week, wow, what is God going to do today? Saturday night is, we're going to have a party. And you know, you get a bunch of believers. So for the first two years, that's all we knew. We're having a party every Saturday night. Every Saturday night, God showed up. So we were born in an incubator of supernatural move of God. It's just natural. What's wrong with you? No problem. Come on. We'll fix that. Our God is big. And you know, the gifts were in manifestation. God called people out. And, and after that... We had a prophecy. Remember, I'm talking on prophecy. My sister-in-law, she has the gift of prophecy like none. When she spoke, I thought it would blew a hole in the window. I mean, she was so strong. The Bible study is going to stop. 
this is going to happen after, and we didn't know everything is going great. And everything she said, word for word, came to pass within two, three, four weeks, everything. See, prophecy is God speaking through a man or a woman. It's God speaking. And you know what? The gift of prophecy is from the Holy Spirit. It can operate in your life. God can speak through you, through your vocal cord, as you set yourself under some condition. <laughs> this condition attached. Did you know that? Wow. And I'm going to name them after. Okay, so how are we doing? So our salvation, our training, was supernatural. So that's why when we started this church, I said, God, unless you build a house, I'm not building nothing. Because if it's not God that does it, then it's a work of the flesh. Nothing wrong with work of the flesh, but work of the spirit. So much better. Because you know, <sighs> you didn't do. So the supernatural, and I can tell you, Pastor Travis can tell you also so many things in my wife, things that have happened, supernatural. I want everything God has for me. See, what he has started, I want him to finish it. And what God is doing is, is because he's Lord of my life. And I say, God, yes, I missed it. Did you miss it? Yes, you miss it sometime, but you learn. <clears throat> So those nine gifts, they're for you. Tell your neighbor, those nine gifts, come on, tell them like you mean it. Yeah, that's for you. Uh, they won't believe you, you know. So I said to God, I said, uh, after those two years, I said, Lord, I want all the gifts. I want them all. Whatever. And you know what? My last page, I'm doing good. Don't want to go over, right? But listen, you look more tired than when before you left for a holiday. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Prophecy is God speaking through man or a woman. Question is, do you want to allow him, the Holy Spirit? Yes or no? Yes. You know, there's a lot of church that says no. A lot of church will say, well, you know, when John died, he was the oldest one, uh, everything stopped. Come on, everything stopped. Wednesday we were in Coburg. And we had some time to spare. We, were, we, we went to the movie. How many know to the movie? Maybe you, you okay. So I didn't know. Uh, there's nothing good, like as usual. So there was, a, uh, there was a, a movie with time travel. I said, well, I like time travel. You know, I like that because you see, you see the past. So we go there. It's called Wrinkle, Wrinkle in Time. Well, we sit there and start watching this. And, and who appears is, uh, what's her name? Oprah. Oprah. Well, I don't know. I didn't know that. But I said, that looks like Oprah. She's all mascara and all that stuff. And it's all about new age. It's all about evil stuff, power coming from here and all that stuff. This is what we feed our new generation. Don't tell me the unsaved don't know about powers. They know about powers. But they don't know about the power of God. You know, I like the power of God because after, after Jesus called Peter, I mean Paul, you know, Paul turned to that woman and said, you devil, come out of her. And you know, after that, she couldn't make any money, right? And you see, uh, every time like he, he was talking to Bar Jesus uh, in front of Sergio, I believe, the, the governor, and he said, you're going to be blind for a season. That's the power of God. You're going to be blind for a season. You devil, you get out of it. 
He walked with an anointing, and he walked with the power of God. See, there's no reason that when you walk at the grocery store and you meet somebody and you look in their face and God speaks to you and says, you know what, pray for this person. You know, you look at her face, you don't need the gift to oper an operation. She looks like warm, death over, whatever you say it. Yes, so thank you. And you know, you can just pray and say, Lord, I'm praying, Holy Spirit, you say that I can pray and this person can be made whole. I need the gift of miracle. I need the gift of faith. I need the gift of healing. And you know what? Whatever gift you may need at the time is great that God will pour upon you. See, so you got to think like that. Invincible. I like the gift of faith. I operated twice in the gift of faith. And I, I'll just tell you how it is, okay? And you know, maybe you will someday, who knows? It, it, everybody, you, you know you play with those games there, a Mario game and all that stuff? And you pick up points here and there, and then all of a sudden you get a, a booster or something like that. Is it what you call it? And you know, when you press on that, you got energy, you go shoom, and bing, bang, bing, and it goes, and it, the gift of faith is like that, friend. It, you just get out of the natural, it's totally supernatural, and you know that you know that whatever you pray for, whatever, I mean, if the person is dead in the natural, in the supernatural, that person is alive. It's amazing. So all these gifts are for us today. I'm out doing. Okay, give me five minutes more. I got one, well, I got the bottom of the page. Okay, are you, okay. Um, none of these gifts are for personal benefit. I said that. They are for minister to the unsaved and saved. The gift are to minister to you today, that to minister to the unsaved. You know, when, when you go out witnessing and God shows you something about somebody else, you got a word of knowledge. That's my more or less gifting word of knowledge. I can pick up, somebody comes in with the wrong attention to that door, I'll pick them up in a second. My wife is the same. And then I'll be ministering here and I'll look at somebody and God says, this is what you have to do. This person is going through this. It's a word of knowledge, word of wisdom. I can't put them in a box, whatever, but it sounds like it is. And I've been operating in that and it's great, okay? Um, so, let's finish with prophecy. Five minutes. Prophecy? Let me see. You need training. You know, I went to a church one time. After two years, we went to a church. And uh, there was no training, but it was a Pentecostal church. It was a lady was there, and she prophesied. And she sounded like a chicken. <laughs> and and uh, I said, well... I, I said, don't despise prophecy, right? Uh, maybe she had it wrong, or I don't know. Now, if she would have went, I would have said, well, I don't know about that. But I said, okay, well, maybe, maybe she needs a little more practice. Somebody interpreted. I didn't look down on them, on her, on nothing. But then we... We went to Mississauga, I got five minutes, and when we went to Mississauga, there was a lady in our church, we sat with her all the time, Mary, Mary Audrey Raycroft, you may have heard of her. And Mary, she said, I'm doing the gift of the Spirit, would you like to come? Sure, never took the gift. I mean, I saw God move, I saw something, even sometime I had a little bit, something in me, right? So we went and we were trained over weeks how to, sometimes you just got to let it go and sometimes you got to hold it. Is that some of the phrase that goes with that? Right? I heard it, but I won't say it anyway. Uh, <clears throat> so these are the conditions about prophecy. Listen. Um, you need training. I need training sometime. Because 
you have to come under someone and be accountable. And I'm just saying all those things. Because prophecy, it's in you. You don't want to use it because you're scared of it. You don't want to give it. You don't want to say nothing. Keep your mouth shut. That's better. You don't get in trouble. There's different of delivery and different time. You can't just prophesy to anybody any time or some things you don't want to deliver. You've got to ask the boss, Holy Spirit, I know this about this person. What do you want me to do with it? Unless he says do something. And if he does, do, says do something, it's got to be able to be judged. Prophecy is to be judged. So if you tell your wife a prophecy, just put an example, you know, and uh, you know, we all hear you and say, Bill, you, you're full of ice cream. <laughs> you ate too, many pe too much pizza. And you got to be able to, to say, okay, I'm accountable. Maybe you're right. Keep on going. You know, if we don't keep on going, we're going to stop. And you know what? Move of God stops. Also, there's uh, other rules. There's house rule. Well, you can come in here and you, you prophesy all the time. And, and you know what? Pastor Travis may say, well, no, uh, this is for bringing people to the Lord. No prophecy here. But you can prophesy and help yourself in a small group under people that will say, yeah, you're right on, buddy. You're right on. And you may say, that's how you learn to prophesy apart from the main group. Because you know how many knows if I bake a pie, it won't turn out like a pie. But if somebody that's really a good cook, like Lori, she bakes a pie and she showed me how to bake the pie, take me a while, but I'll get good at it. And what we practice makes us good at. And after a while, you'll be somewhere and there's something inside of you that's stirring it's the holy spirit you know katrine kuhlman she might have been very flamboyant and all that stuff but she could hear the holy spirit and when she heard the holy spirit she did and she wasn't sorry she just did it